We're back with Mark Silber as he takes a look at some of the photos from the AYP community and gives feedback on them. Uh, this is from the Adult Rec League playing uh, from DC that was playing at his stadium. Uh, and so this was kind of when, you know, baseball games finally were starting to a degree. Bob, um, I, you know, it's square. Brett. Is that just because the, you cropped it that way or did you shoot it? And you can answer this in the chat. Did you shoot it as a square or was it two and a quarter uh, square or did you just crop it that way? Okay, this has got, I, I like the image a lot. It's got a lot of things going for it. Uh, you know, it's a sign of the times. It's what I was just talking about, you know, shooting the obvious right in front of us. In this case, it's it's your domain. And I like these guys um, to the right of him blurred out. That works to me because really it's a portrait with uh, with this kid with the bat. A kid. I don't know if he's a kid or not, but, it's, you know, it makes it really interesting. So it was cropped. OK, cool. It works as a square. And, you know, with our masks on, we, it's, it's hard to really tell the details about people, uh, you know, because we usually would look at that facial expression. But it's, hey, it's what's happening right now. I think this image works really well. Uh, you have my focus is on him. And then secondarily, I see these guys, which adds to the story. Obviously, they're playing baseball. There's nobody in the bleachers. This is our modern world right now, kind of sad but true. Hey, it works, Bob. I, I don't have any any construct you know anything constructive to add to it. I think it's a a really great image. It works really well. So our next one is Daniel uh, Sawyer. I'm not sure exactly how to say that, but oh, wow. um, he says I don't consider myself a bird photographer, uh, but this is a fantastic subject, uh, and it's. Uh, he's been watching and photographing these birds, uh, uh, this particular family of birds since May or June. Wow. And so he says this is a lesson on patience and perseverance. Uh, and he yes. would say that probably only one in four visits have yielded decent photos and capturing moments like this. So he chalks it up quite a bit to luck and patience. Well, I think patience is the key there, you know, and that's really something with animal photography is waiting it out and you'll see we have a fantastic interview with Florian Schultz he's he's like amazing animal photographer and he made that point like you have to number one go back to the same location over and over and over again which sounds like you have done and then just wait for that magic moment okay so you have a punctuation point the bird is the punctuation point You've got diagonal lines, which adds vitality in the composition. And there's a kind of a mystery to me, like, where did, what, what's happening? Why is it landing like that? But, um, and I like it as a black and white. I didn't, you know, I mean, we could see a comparison as a color, but I think it works really well uh, as a black and white because it's got, you know, you, I don't know what the colors are in the bird. If it wasn't like really outstanding, I think just leave it as a black and white. But uh, that works really well. And I like the diagonal um, kind of like emphasizing the lines of the bird itself. So well done, it works. It's an osprey. Um, yeah, so you got to just wait. I would I would love to see some of your continuing images here and see what other ones you come up with. If you came up with one like it had something in its talons, that could be really amazing, you know, whether it was a rodent it had just picked up or a snake or something. That might be an interesting uh addition to this, but it works really well. The the thing that I I think highlights it is that diagonal line of the uh, the wood going into its nest and the fact that it's paralleling that. I think that's really cool. Awesome. Well done. Keep it up. All right. Uh, here's one from Daniel um, Moliner. So we've got another Daniel. Uh, Daniel. He says this is part of an ongoing project he's working on, uh, uh, Brest La uh, Blanche. Uh, I, I'm guessing it's French. <laughs> and uh, okay. my French is not very good. 
Uh, but it's a street photography project documenting the city he lives in, and it focuses on the new upcoming generation. That is cool. I like this image. There's the geometry. You know, geometry is a magical thing. Um, and you've got you've got all the geometry going on there, which is really cool. Then we got the three kids. Um, my my only thing here is I would like to again see a focal point. Like what what should I be looking at? I see the geometry. My eye is pretty much drawn there, and that's cool because it's leading. It's a leading line of geometric figures. But then I've got these three guys, and I don't know which one I should be focused on. So the only thing I would have recommended here is <clears throat> I would take the guy on the left, and I would have gotten up close to him and crouched down low, which would have made him prominent in the frame. You know, with sports, if you want to emphasize the action, get low. That's the rule. That's why you'll see sports photographers crouch down. They get down on their knee because they want they want to emphasize that action. So rather than having it be kind of a distant thing, I would try to position myself down low. It's tricky because you didn't necessarily know these guys were coming along, but you, if you're anticipating it, you could look the other way and say, "Oh, here comes three kids on skateboards. I'm gonna, I'm gonna." I'm going to fit, situate myself right over here, you know, and get down low. So when this kid rides by, boom. And it would have also, it would have made the, the kid more prominent and also would have made the those geometric shapes more prominent. And we would have focused on one of them. Maybe the other guys could have been blurred in motion. You know, that's another thing you can do is get a show, slow shutter speed. Actually, all possibly all three of them. I'm just... This is just spitballing. I'm just kind of off the top of my head. Some different things you, you might try on that. But again, I would like to see a focal point. So I'm, my eye goes, okay, that one kid is really who I'm looking at. Does that make sense? Uh, it's, really, it's really, really obviously important in telling a story to put the viewer's attention on the one thing you want them to get out of it. All right. We've got a photo from Sati uh, Zaniel, um, and they it's their they primarily do nature photography, and I saw that they had a couple of photos like this where it was really tiny insects, amazing, uh, which is not something that we see super often uh, in the community. So I had to grab some of these because they're they're fascinating. That is really cool. Okay, I'm sorry, I skipped. Say the name again. I just want to announce uh, who. Uh, Sati, I believe. Uh, you can correct me okay. in the comments if I'm if I'm wrong right. in the well, chat. Uh, okay, you did a great job. You um, you have your subject matter and the subject in the frame. You blurred the background, which keeps it clean. Um, that's very interesting. What is that creature? I mean, is it some kind of a wasp it looks like a wasp kind of a, a scary wasp you know i think you nailed it i i i you know my eye boom goes right to that it's in the center of the frame cool i mean we've already long since thrown out the rule of, the quote rule of thirds which there is no rule uh <laughs> so good job okay Keep All right, it. we've got a photo from a longtime fan, uh, Sandy. Okay. Oh, uh, Sandy, wow. Okay. Yeah, Sandy. and I just saw saw them in the chat. So, Dude, Sandy, you just nailed this, didn't you? You know what my first thought was? It's like Cartier-Bresson meets Bob Holmes. <laughs> not really. It's your own unique view. It's not a Bob Holmes photograph. Okay, this has got a lot of right, uh, really good things going for it. Again, my eye, boom, right to the guy sitting. That makes it very clear what the story is. You've got images within images, which is a, not always easy to pull off. So you've got the guy, that's one image. You've got the, the group of guys, another set of images. And then you've got the overall 
overarching, you know, image with the frame of this uh, scene. You framed it really well. Uh, the 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 uh, clouds give us a, a you know sort of a simple backdrop. We're not I I can see the texture of them, but I don't have to like dwell on it. But really, you've got three photographs within one. Bravo, that's hard to pull off, and you did it. And the guys, what's really cool is the guys are framed between those two figures that are in that are blurred. So you had to wait for that to happen. You didn't just snap that shutter any old moment. You waited. And that's very commendable. Good job, Sandy. Uh, great photograph. What can I say? You did it. We hope that you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a like and leave a comment. We love to hear from you. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you can know when all of our future videos come out. And finally, be sure to get out there and capture your own images of life.